thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I just have a quick word. I always say quick word, and sometimes it's not quick. But hopefully this will be quick. And this is so good, right? Because I have just been in this space of hearing from God and getting a lot of strategy. And I'm excited for strategy, right? Because one thing that I realized for me is I'm very much a how person, right? Um, so like in my business, you know, a lot of times when they talk about, you know, the passion to be an entrepreneur and to work this business, they talk about connecting it with your why. Um, but I'm very much a how person. Like I'm very much a how person. Like I know why I want to be an entrepreneur. I know why I want to, to be able to make money to afford me and my kids a certain kind of lifestyle, right? But how does that work? How does that look? So one of one of the things that God revealed to me is I'm very much a how person. And that is why my ministry is about demonstration. It is about strategy. That's why sometimes when you hear me talk and you keep hearing me say, listen, listen, I want to make sure that you're getting it. So I'm always excited when the Holy Ghost reveals something to me and gives me the how, right? That's very, very important to me. And so I want to get, I want to talk to you about the climate that we're in, what's going on, how this is biblical and how we as believers are going to have and manifest and see demonstration. <clears throat> so the Holy Ghost started to talk to me about two instances of what is going on right now in the world, right? So the Holy Ghost so there is something that is, is manifesting in my life, right? And I have, I don't want to make this thing an idol. I don't want to be consumed with it, but the Holy Ghost keeps it in front of me. Like every time I try, and it, it's related to marriage. Every time I try to go in a different direction, right? The Holy Ghost just brings it right back. And so I was like, God, I don't want to make this thing an idol. I don't want to slip into idolatry, but like this thing is so heavy on me, Lord. Like there are other things I would love to be praying about, but this thing is so heavy on me. So the Holy Ghost started to talk to me about urgency. So in, in the book of Genesis, when Joseph is in prison, right? And Joseph seems forgotten about, you know, when God sends Pharaoh the dream, right? And Pharaoh tries to get people to interpret the dream. I'm sorry, I'm saying Pharaoh. Well, yeah, and, and Pharaoh tries to get people to interpret the dream and no one can interpret the dream. Then finally, we know the cupbearer remembers Joseph and the Bible says that at once, right? Suddenly, there goes that urgency. They go get Joseph and Joseph goes up. This is all biblical. Y'all know I'm never gonna tell y'all nothing. That's not Bible. And Pharaoh calls for Joseph at once. Joseph goes, he interprets the dream. And here's what the Holy Ghost pointed out to me. Now, <clears throat> the, and you can read it. Joseph does not say when the famine is going to hit. Joseph, we know the famine is going to come after the seven years of plenty, right? But here's what I love about that moment. Like Pharaoh doesn't say, well, okay, how much time do you have left on your sentence, right? Go finish your sentence work on some stuff and then, you know, we'll no. As soon as Joseph interpreted the dreams and Pharaoh saw need for Joseph, listen, it was a, it was a rap. It was a rap. And that's how, that, that's what God was talking to me about. God was talking to me about what you're feeling is not your sense of urgency. It's heaven's sense of urgency. It's heaven's sense of urgency. Now, let me tell you how the world and what's going on with the world is is counter is counteracting that right we know what's going on in the world right now with this this coronavirus we we know how everybody is acting we know the paranoia you know we know we know we see it we see it right and and even though we know you know what god has said and i know you guys are are pleading the blood i know you're standing on psalm 91 i know you're i know that you recognize that this is not our portion let me tell you what god showed to me as far as as what what's going on right and this is so i don't have a direct word about coronavirus and and i'm not going to say but god pointed out to me what ha oh help me jesus god pointed out to me what happens when we are when we are uh, when there is movement when there is movement right for god's people and he took me to genesis 12 we know what's there for genesis 12 right genesis 12 is when god has said to abram right 
leave your country. I'm going to make your name great. That is the Abraham covenant. That is what Galatians 3 and 13 says that one of, one of the two things Jesus did, Jesus died to redeem us from the curse of the law and to reconcile us with Abraham's blessing. So we know that's what Genesis 12 says. Let me point out to you what happens in Genesis 12 that is going on with us right now. So God tells Abram, and listen, this is directly in link with our March prophetic word. So that's why I'm so excited that God is demonstrating what is going on with the word that he gave me, right? So in Genesis 12, God tells Abram this huge blessing, right? I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you famous. I'm going to make you rich, all of that stuff, right? And so guess what? The Bible says Abraham went and he started doing. Let's go to Genesis 12 and 10. Now there was a famine in the land. So you just gave me this big promise, right? How many of us started 2020? Like 2020 about to be bomb. It's the year of the mouth. Like we all these prophetic words. Listen, what, what what's going on out here? What's going i i don't get it like listen (laughs) there was a famine in the land abraham is mm, this don't look like i will make you into a great nation i will make your name great i this don't look like that there's a famine here i don't understand what's going on here right i don't know what's going on here so Abram has to make a little bit of a detour, right? And the detour is takes him in a in a worse direction than a famine because now he has to go someplace where he fears for his life because his wife is so beautiful. So the, the whole thing looking crazy. The, so I said all that to say, listen, even the craziness and the paranoia of this world is, okay, help me, Jesus, because this is so good. This is so good, right? Even the craziness and the famine that's right now in, in, in our land, right? We can't, we can't do like Abram did, right? Not in the fact that Abram went another direction, right? Not even in that, right? But what happened is Abram is now like, so he goes in a different direction and he's telling his wife, you know, well, I'm gonna have to lie because, you know, you're really pretty and these people might try to kill me. So this is what I'm saying, right? This is what I'm saying. Forget about the fact that there's a famine in the land and this virus. You 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 have to keep your eye on the prize. The eye on the listen. Genesis two and, and three is is the, is our eyes on the prize. Genesis. Listen. This is the month of movement for us. This is the month of identity for us. Right. This is what that is. Like Abram, did you forget what God said? How, how are you thinking you're getting ready to die when God just told you he about to make your name great? How do you think you're getting ready to, to die, Abel, when God just said he's going to make you into a great nation? You mean to tell me you, you did what your father couldn't do? You left everybody, your whole, you've gotten this far to now believe that the devil about to kill you? That's what's happening here? No, that's not what's happening here. That, listen. Listen, and and so that was God talking to me about movement, right? And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about identity, right? Because our March prophetic word was around identity and it was around movement, right? So let's talk about identity a little bit. And let's talk about, again, so so the first how is keep moving. Keep your eye on the prize. What are you believing God for? Do not let this, listen, don't be spending all your time in your closet praying about no coronavirus because God got you. God got you. Stay on the field. Keep your baskets ready, right? So let's talk about identity. So the two scriptures I'm going to talk about with identity is David, because y'all know I love David, and the prodigal son. So when David fights Goliath, right, and he's going towards Goliath, right, he has a t- he has a powerful testimony behind him, right? He's like, it, it, you know, and we've talked about this, right? He's like, listen, I I don't I don't dealt with like some bears and some lions, so I'm good, right? So he get them little rocks, and it, it's about to be a wrap, right? And that is the posture, that is the identity that David had, right? 
Maybe we don't have that testimony. Maybe we don't have that posture. Maybe we don't have any powerful moments with, with God like David had, right? So take on the identity of the prodigal son, right? The prodigal son was all of us. I done messed up completely. I have missed the mark. I have not lived according to who I really was. I have messed up my relationship with my father, right? But the prodigal son in his worst moment was like, you know what? My dad's servants live better than this. So I'll go and I'll just tell my dad, let me be a servant. Let me be a servant, right? So even though the prodigal son did not have a powerful God got me, he had a, I'm, I'm better than this. I'm, and I know my father walks in enough goodness that his servants get you. So at the very least, God, at the very least, I know where I am right now is not where you, is not what you think of me. I know. And so the prodigal son... He decides to go home. And before he can even tell his father, right? His father, and that's what God, his father was waiting on him. His father was waiting on him. And the Bible says when he sees him from a ways off, he starts like, hey, it's celebration time. Get the robes. Listen, the condition and the mindset and how long his son was gone did not change the identity of who he was, right? So David identified with a very powerful testimony. That's who he was, right? And the prodigal son didn't have that level of identity, but he at least knew, right? I can identify with the fact that I've seen my dad treat his servants better than this. This month is about us knowing who we are and knowing who God is. That's how we started this month off. Remember, we talked about that March prophetic word talks about Jesus asking his disciples, who do you say that I am, right? And, and because they identify, because Simon Peter said, you are the Messiah, then Jesus then calls him, okay, Peter, rock, now your identity has changed, right? That's what this is about. That's what this is about. So again, I'm, I'm going to try to bring it all home, right? And just, just to let you know, keep moving keep your, what is happening is supposed to be happening. It is, a, I know people feel like all pen, it is biblical. It is biblical that this, this is the Bible that as Abram went into the place where God told him there was a, um, th this is not the, it didn't say it, it stopped raining. It's a full fledged famine already taking place where I'm headed. I'm sorry for Abram. I think I said, David, um, I, I, I don't think that I, maybe I missed it. This is, this is Abram thinking, mm, did we, did we somehow miss it? Right. And then here's that urgency. Here's, here's God. Like, listen, you can't afford to get distracted. Cause listen, baby, this thing about to be popping just like the prodigal son. Oh my God, my son home. Get out the, listen, get his robe, get the ring. Get, it's celebration time. It's celebration time, right? Same thing with Joseph, right? Listen, oh, okay, you got a plan. Listen, you rule of Egypt right now. Right? Pharaoh didn't ask no questions. Pharaoh, there is, in the midst of the, the famine and the opposition that we see, there is urgency for God, for us to have what he said we, we can have. There is urgency for us to, to have it. God is serious about this thing. God is serious about this thing. So do not, listen, I, listen, I think that it, it is without, it is, it would be remiss for me to tell you to not stay mindful and prayerful about what is going on, right? But listen, don't be like Abram and have this moment where you now see a death assignment, right? No, that's not what's going on here. That's especially for us as believers, right? Continue to pray as God tells you to pray, but do not lose sight, right? One of the words I said is stay the course because God is serious about this thing. There is urgency on this thing. One of the things the Holy Ghost said to me when he was talking about David is, listen, Goli David started running towards Goliath. I'm, I'm ready for my reward. I don't have time to be talking to you, right? And I truly believe the wind of that run was the Holy Ghost that took that rock that sank into Goliath's head and killed him, right? So I just want to talk about in this hour, right? I know that you see the opposition, right? But I want you to know that heaven has a sense of urgency. 
Heaven has a sense of urgency. Do not give into the paranoia. Do not give into it, right? Do not give into it. This month for us is all about identity and it is all about movement. Don't stop moving, y'all. Don't stop moving. Do not. Keep going. Know who you are. 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 God is faithful. God is good. God loves us. And listen, on the other side of this, on the other side of this is promotion. Our day of performance is at hand. It is at hand. All right. Stay the course.